Today we're going to discuss, it's kind of like an overview of what we've looked at for our systems, is special systems. So, so far, what we have seen as we've been talking about these different systems is we've talked about how we can solve them with graphing, with substitution, and with elimination. So far, we've been talking about systems that have one solution, meaning if we were to graph them, then we would get an intersection point, and that that one point right here in the middle is a solution to both equations. But there are also some situations that are going to happen where, for example, the second one here, where we don't get any solution. If you look at the graph, because these two lines are parallel, these are never going to have a point in common. So we would call that no solution. And even though this last one looks like it's one equation, it's actually a system of two equations on the same grid. And when you see that, it looks like one equation because really they kind of are the same equation. We call this infinitely many solutions, meaning every point on the lines are the same or shared from the other line. So your answers are either going to be one solution, no solutions, or infinite solutions. So let's look at some of the different possibilities on what you might get in certain situations. So here we have a situation. We're going to solve it by graphing, and then we're going to solve it by substitution. So we remember with the first one here, we're going to put the um, first equation in uh, red, and we'll put the second one in blue. We always have our x and y axes. And obviously you should be using a ruler Unfortunately, I can't with the program, but at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my y equals mx plus b to graph. Very first point, the b point, is my 1, or my y-intercept. I'm going to use my, inter my slope here of a 3 to go up 3 and forward 1. I also can come down 3 and backwards 1. And we're going to get some equation that looks like this as a graph. Okay, so this is the y equals 3x minus, I'm sorry, plus 1. So the second equation, we now have a y-intercept at negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5. My slope is still a 3, so I'm going to go up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1 up 3 over 1. So when I draw my line, and again, should be with a ruler, but I don't can't really do it with this program, I'm going to get this look. Now, some of us will hopefully have already seen this before I even drew the graph. These two lines are parallel. Now, what I also want to notice is, because I have same slope, they both had a 3. but they had a different y-intercepts. That is telling me right from the beginning, even before I graphed this, that the lines are parallel. And what do we know about parallel lines and shared solutions? There are no solutions in common to both of these equations. Notice I'm not saying zero solution. There's no solution. Zero is a number. We want to say there's no solution. So I can also, somebody else might come along and say, you know what, I want to solve this system by substitution. So we're going to solve it by substitution. So we're not going to have a graph to be able to say that these lines are parallel. But if you remember, from the substitution method, remember we had y equals 3x minus 1, y equals 3x minus 5. Remember, we solved one equation for a variable. These both happen to be solved for a variable. And if y equals 3x minus 1 and y also equals 3x minus 5, 
what we can do is take this equation and make it equal to this equation. Okay, we basically substituted in for the y. Now we only have one variable. So our very first move here, when we have variables on both sides, we want to get them together. So I'm going to subtract 3x. But when I subtract 3x from both sides, notice what happens. The variables disappear. We have no more variables. I still need to finish. I still need to keep coming down here at this point. So, oh, and this is not going to matter at all, but I'm just going to come back up here. This should have been a plus 1 and a plus 1. It doesn't affect the answer to this, but I do want to be accurate. I think the red up at the upper above, and I circled the 1, I kind of made it like a negative 1. Anyway, so the variables disappear. When I finish this, though, i got to keep coming down to this point. I still want to simplify everything that I can. And then I analyze what we see. Well, 1 definitely does not equal negative 5. The not equal sign is that. If the left side doesn't equal the right side, then our answer is no solution. So we don't just stop because we see the variables disappear. And we'll show you in a reason, for a reason in, in a minute. If we have the variables disappear, we still analyze what's left. If the left side doesn't equal the right side, we don't need to see a graph. We can just say no solution. So here we have a situation with the perimeter of a rectangle and the perimeter of a triangle. So obviously this is, this is a system that's a little bit more easy to understand. We know the perimeter of a rectangle. We know the opposite sides are the same. So the perimeter formula for the rectangle is going to be 2 times 4y, because there are two sides that are 4y, and that is pretty messy. I'm just going to try that one more time. 2 4y sides plus 2 2x sides, and we are told that the perimeter is 36. That's the first equation, and I can kind of fine-tune this a little bit better. I'm going to say 8y's plus 4x equals 36. Okay. On the second equation, we're looking at the perimeter still of a rectangle. Well, again, all I'm doing is adding the sides. So I have 6x plus 6x plus 24y equals... And they tell us up here that it is 108. And again, I can fine-tune this a little bit better to get 12x plus 24y equals 108. So now I want to graph these two. And when I want to graph these two, there's a couple different ways I can do this. Um, I can certainly solve for y's and turn it into slope-intercept form. So I'm going to do that right now, and you can try it too and see if you can get it, and then we'll double check on the pause. At the same point, what I'm going to do is also set up my graph with my x and y um, axes. I'm going to only focus on quadrant 1. So just pause the video, try to put those two equations in slope-intercept form. So here I've done the two both for slope-intercept form. And just to kind of show you what I did, and hopefully you already have this correct, remember we solve for y, y equals mx plus b. So my first move was to subtract 4x from both sides. Then what I do is I divided this by 8. 4 divided by 8 is a negative 1 half, because we add a half, a negative, we moved it over. And 36 divided by 8 becomes 9 over 2, which is 4 and a half. The second equation, when I solve for y's, first thing I did was subtract 12x from both sides. Negative 12x divided by this 24 is your negative 1 half x, and then 24 into 108 is also 4 and a half or 9 halves. So what's going to happen here is when I go to graph this, 
I'm going to go in my scales just so you can see go up by halves. I'm going to go to four and a half. That's my starting point or the nine halves. My my scale or my I'm sorry not my scale my slope says down one and forward two. Down one, forward two. Down one, forward two. That is showing me a negative one half slope. So my equation looks something like this. So then I move on to the second equation, and it's the same. There's nothing different. So this graph is actually showing both. And because this graph is actually showing both equations, this is now infinite. solutions. Meaning they're basically the exact same equation. And they look a little bit different, but that's because one of them is just multiplied by a number a little bit bigger, but everything is multiplied by the same number. They are the same equation. So here we want to solve this by elimination. So again, without having to make a graph. So again, let's start with our initial we had 4x plus 8y equals 36. We had 12x plus 24y equals 108. So remember in the elimination method, we are to find a way to make one of the coefficient pairs opposites. Now looking at these two, you could go either way. I'm looking at these two thinking the 8 and the 24 and the 4 and the 12 are easily done. I'm just going to pick the top one just because I think the 12 is a little bit smaller in numbers. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 3. When I do that all the way across, I get negative 12x minus 24y's equals negative 108. Now I can bring the other equation over because we didn't have to do anything to that one. And then we can go ahead and solve. So we have opposite coefficients. So we see our coefficient, I mean our other terms lined up. This is where the big plus sign can come in. And we're going to add. Well, obviously when we add here, Negative 12x and 12x cancels. Negative 24y and 24y cancels. Negative 108 and 108 cancels. Leaving me with 0 equals 0. So what that means is, and we do finish the side, is that if the left side equals the right side, then we say infinite solutions. So as a kind of recap, if I am solving and my variables all disappear, meaning there are zero variables left over, I go as far as I can still go until I can compare the numbers on the left to the numbers on the right. If they are the same number, as in this last example, they are the same equation, and they are infinite solutions. If they are not the same number, that basically means that they are parallel lines and they would have no solutions. So again, one solution, meaning we have one intersecting point. No solutions, meaning the lines are parallel, so there's no intersection points. And infinite uh, points or solutions, because really they are the same 